Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. Um, today I actually want to be testing um, the Chantecaille uh, Future Skin again. Um, I remember wearing it, I tested this a couple days ago with the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator because I feel like they're so similar. Um, they both dry down to kind of the same finish. They both, I feel like they wore pretty similar. Um, I'll have that video posted before this one so you can take a look at that comparison. Um, but today I just kind of want to wear this one alone. This is a very pricey foundation, so um, I only have a sample. Um, but actually before I start, I feel like I could use a little bit of moisturizer. This is um, a moisturizer from Delia Organics called Wake Up Lotion, and it just feels super, super nice. It's very like bouncy and jelly <clears throat> and you just need like the tiniest amount and it just like it goes a long way every single time i use this i can't pinpoint what the smell is. after wearing this the other day i kind of was like maybe i want to get like a bottle of it <laughs> if something looks really good i enjoy having that variety in my collection i'm very much like i love having a lot of blushes and bronzers and shadows and lippies but as far as like base or complexion products i have very few um i have only a few foundations and like a couple concealers um but to me it's so hard to find base com or like complexion products that i don't if i if a lot of them were really good i'd have a lot more but i feel like it's just so hard to find a really good one um so on one side i'm going to go in with the Chantecaille. And then on the other side, I want to try this primer. This also had a low score on EWG, but it's the Maybelline Baby Skin Instant Pore Eraser. Um, so I'm going to go in with that on the right side of my face and then with no primer on the left side. I'm just going to do a tiny bit because I know with primers usually a little goes a long way. Oh, it's like super... Wow, interesting. It does have like a silky, velvety um, feel to it. And I don't really like that because I feel like that feeling, like it doesn't, like you, there, you can't rub it in enough. Like you can't, you don't know when you're done rubbing it in because that texture never fade, like never goes away. So I don't know if like I put too much on or if I didn't finish rubbing it in. But on my hand, I put it on this half. So besides, like, I don't know why now it looks probably just wider from, from like stimulation. Um, but other than that, I don't see a difference. <laughs> Might be different on the face though, because obviously you have more pores on your face and all that. So. I think I did a little bit and probably not even noticeable on camera, but in person, I feel like the slightest bit is like a little bit more filled in over here than over here. I don't know. I have not yet found a primer that actually does something. I have a few. If there is one out there that you know is really good and you've tried, like now that feeling, I can't get it off my hands and I hate it. Um, yeah, if you know of one that's really good and you and it's effective, I would love any recommendations or suggestions. At the same time, I feel like it would be even better if, you know, like if it's a good enough foundation that you don't need primer. Anyway, moving on to the foundation. This is in the shade Porcelain. And I love that Chantecaille samples actually have enough that you can test. Because I've gotten samples from like, especially beauty counter. <laughs> you get the skimpiest samples from beauty counter. There was one other brand that I wanted to try something from and I got this such a tiny sample or, oh, it was a uh, crunchy. I got such a tiny sample that like the product dried up before I could even try anything. <laughs> um, and then it's just like so pointless. My beauty sponge is damp. That, wow, um, barely did anything. I feel like other days I've had better coverage than that. Maybe I just need to apply more. Or maybe it is just really light coverage. I mentioned in my last video that you're not going to see a lot of new releases here. I'm not someone who's constantly purchasing new makeup. I love 
I love new makeup. I love playing with makeup. Um, but I'm just not someone who like, you know, I'm not going to be, I don't have a lot of space to draw that makeup. Um, so I'm, I, and I like to see everything that I have in one area. Like I have my vanity here in a drawer and literally I have all of my makeup that's good, not expired that I'm not decluttering, like all the makeup that I could possibly be using is in front of me. And I like to see all of my options every single time I'm doing my makeup. And so that's another reason that I don't want to over purchase because I don't want to have multiple drawers or like bins like stored away from where I normally do my makeup because I'll never remember I have them. I'll never go back and use them. Um, but this Chantecaille looks really nice. You know, barely any coverage if that's your thing. But looking up close, it's super, super skin like. Um, I kind of want to go in with just a little bit more to see if I can build up a little bit of coverage. Um, just a little bit. I feel like it's okay, but I wouldn't mind a little bit more. Maybe just like in the center-ish. The other thing I'm going to be doing is, I feel like that added a little bit of coverage. The other thing I'm going to be doing is comparing, so the... <laughs> Um, I have the other day I noticed I think I figured out that the cover effects concealer is what causes like a weird patchiness on my face that I've been trying to figure out for a while and I think it only happens if I layer it at least twice and so today I'm gonna go in with um, two layers of Kosas and two layers of cover effects on both sides and check is that really what gives me that weird patchiness because I've had it for a long time and I've always blamed that um like patchiness on foundations um because it's not only in the concealer area like sometimes I think it is and other times I see it like more kind of everywhere here under the eyes so I don't know but I'm just gonna test it again and just keep trying to figure it out because I want to know what it is um, anyways, we're going with the concealer now. I'm going to wait for the foundation to set before I apply any face products, but I might go in with, um, eyeshadow first then. All right. So I'll go, I'm going to go in with, with the cover effects concealer on the lids. And the thing is, I don't get that, like, um, I don't get that weird, texture or or like patchiness on my lids it's only like on my face so i'm gonna put some here and then on the other side i'm gonna do kosas blend everything out and then do one more layer of both concealers so we have kosas man the kosas actually kind of smells funky i heard people talking about it and i never noticed it but right now i do it's not super strong, but the Kosas is quite a bit lighter, um, but that is okay. Because in the end, it all, it all looks fine. I keep saying this, and I just need to go to Sephora and do it, um, but I really want to try the Item Beauty Concealer. Because it seems like the texture is really similar to, to the... Um, to the cover effects concealer and i think the cover effects concealer honestly has more coverage than the kosas concealer which again like people raved about how much coverage it has and i don't know i don't think i see that i don't know if it's the lighter shade so it doesn't look like it's covering a lot but i feel like it doesn't matter what the shade is if it has coverage it has coverage all right i'm gonna go in Again, I don't need any more concealer, but I really want to figure out if if it's this concealer that's giving me those like ugly patches. So I'm doing one more layer of cover effects and one more layer of Kosas. I haven't used the Kosas foundation in a minute, like a couple week or like a week because I've been trying other foundations and I'm excited to go back to it. But gosh, now I kind of want to go get a bottle of the Future Skin. <laughs> and it's really expensive. It's like a solid, I think it's at least $80. Yeah, this Kosas concealer smell now, I could smell it more. And I also heard that it goes bad really fast. 
and I honestly don't get the rage. I don't get the um, everyone going crazy about it. Um, I also feel like the Cover FX concealer has a little bit less dew, which I prefer because that means I have to powder less. Um, so yeah, anyways, I, I feel like with the, um, Kosa's concealer, I, I, like, if, even if I'm looking down, I see a lot more of the, like, purple under eye. I don't know, I don't, I am, I don't get the, honestly, I don't get the reach. Okay, so that is our base. Um, I like how glowy it is, but it also sets down to, like, a, a complete matte while not being drying. I love that. Okay, so today I decided for my eyeshadow, I'm gonna go with the, uh, like a random color generator. The first number I got is 78, which in my collection is the Indie Color um, from the uh, Tardiest palette. And I also almost never use this shade, so I'm excited to use it. It's like a super light brown, um, taupey brown. I'm also really excited to get a new palette. I don't know which one yet, I don't want to get a new palette for the sake of getting a new palette. I'm kind of bored with my current palettes because I only have a few and they're mostly pretty old. Um, well, two are kind of newer and two are older. I'm trying to find my brush here. Um, I know Sephora is having sales. I saw this week um, Bare Minerals is having some of their shadows on sale at Ulta. Um, but... None of them like, you know, scream to me. And if I'm gonna buy makeup in general or like shadows, I want them to like, I wanna be really excited for them. And I want like to want them really bad before I go and buy something because otherwise it'll just kind of sit in my like drawer and I won't ever use it. I cannot find my brush. It's my favorite. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yay. I love this brush. This is the it's called their domed shadow brush and I use it for um, pretty much like every single time I do shadow. So I can't believe I almost lost it. I'm going to go in with this indie color for like the transition. Um, I love Tarte shadows. I think the quality is really, really good. I love how pigmented they are, but like you can still build on them. And they blend so well. There's a little bit of fallout, but I mean, if you can tap it off, it'll be okay. Do you watch YouTube mostly for new makeup reviews? Or do you also like to watch YouTube just for like makeup application, makeup chatty videos, um, or just like using old products? Not old, but like stuff that's been out for a while. What is your like preference or why do you watch YouTube? I like all of those things, but I'm just curious, like do most people like only watch YouTube for the reviews? Okay, so I've been going through random colors and I've just not, not been liking any of the ones that's been like giving me. So the first one that I got that I don't wanna use is this brown color from the Bella Pier palette. Um, I just, I don't know, maybe I could go in with it, but it's just like, I don't know, it's just a brown. Um, then the other two that I got were <laughs> um, this uh, uh, this color, blue blue whale and dolphin, which is this color. And I think they're like, they're both pretty colors and it would be fun to do a look out of them, but I think it would need to be a little bit more strategic and maybe like just a, like a one blue look and then maybe I could even incorporate like that hummingbird shade in there, which is like this bright blue pink. I think maybe for my next look, I'll focus on those blue shades and that'll be fun. But for today, um, the other color that I got that I wanna use actually is number 24 in the Bella Pierre palette, which is this like, it's like a, I don't know, pink, purple, mid, like a light, mid, like a muted magenta almost. Um, show you a swatch. I'm, I really like that color. Just building on that. Oh, I like that. I love playing with makeup, but like, I just don't always have inspo. Like I'm not always there creatively, I guess. 
but I love wearing it, buying it, <laughs> um, like talking about it, sharing different looks, especially when it like turns out to be like a really pretty glittery look or something. Um, I think I'm just gonna do one layer there so I could see if I'll add another shadow or maybe just go in with a satin like creamy shade or something. Um, so far, I like how that looks. I like that combo so far. I think what I'm gonna go in on top of this look with is this color from e.l.f. This like cream in the shade Moon. I guess kind of like a liquid shadow. I think that's really pretty. And I'm gonna go in with the slightest layer. I like how this looks when it's not super overdone. I love um, like glittery or shimmery shadows in general. I think they can look so pretty. I can't really tell if like I took everything off with my finger and now it's just patchy or I don't know. Let's see. I'm, I also don't want to layer it up because I'll just do a little bit. I think I'll have it set for a little longer this time and then I'll just go in with a brush and like tap out the edges but not really touch like the center of the product. Okay, while that dries because I need it to dry before I go in with eyeliner, I'm gonna go in with a bronzer. So this bronzer is not a bronzer. <laughs> this is a milk makeup. I think it's their foundation stick. Yeah, it's the Flex Foundation Stick in the shade Almond. Um, when I first bought it, I totally was like, yeah, I can use this. Because I got it, I think, at like um, TJ Maxx or something where or Marshalls where it was like really heavily discounted. And I thought it would be cool to use it as a bronzer. But then after trying it, like it's kind of too light and too warm as a bronzer. But then one day I tried it again and I think I like it. So let me tap this out real quick. I feel like some of the sparkle kind of like transferred or got really high up there and that just, and it's stuck and it looks awful <laughs> when it's like not where it should be. Oh well. So I guess in the future when I use this, I need to like really let it set and go in just around the edges with the brush to blend it out versus like tapping it out all over the lid with the finger. I feel like that's the best method for this shadow because that I can't tell if it looks nice or if it looks patchy and tacky. <laughs> that's okay. I'll keep playing with it and figure it out. But I'm going to go in with this now and I'm just going to draw it on. I don't like cream bronzers because I don't like to draw stuff on my face because I feel like it's really going to move the foundation around. But I really like this brush for that. And I feel like if it's creamy enough, it could be okay. But like, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, that's, that's blending in really fast. At the same time, I feel like that's enough like disturbance to my skin. Like that's an, like that is already gonna disturb something underneath. Like I tried different bronzer sticks in the past, like the milk one, the physician's formula one. I like cream bronzers, but I like them to be in a pan, like the Danessa Myricks one, or even like the e.l.f. one, um, where I can put a brush in and then go directly with a brush. I mean, I guess I can go, you know, do that with a brush, but. I feel like it's not as an even application if I'm like, if I have a whole pan of it and I can dip in with a brush, tap it off in my hand. Um, but in general, I don't think this shade is too bad. I think this shade is kind of nice. I pulled this out recently because I kind of like stashed it away because I didn't want to get rid of it, but I also didn't think it was a good bronzer shade. But now I don't think it's too bad. I'm going to go in with on my brush for like the perimeter of my face though. Now that this foundation has had more time to set, like up close it still looks skin-like and everything, but I feel like looking from afar, it's starting to look um, just more foundation-y, more like dry almost kind of, and I just, I don't like that. So 
I don't know. I'm gonna keep wearing it and keep seeing if it's something that like I, if if it's something I would actually want to pay so much money for. But honestly, between the tinted hydrator, between the veil one, yeah, I just don't think this is worth eighty dollars. Like considering everything else that I own. For blush today, I kind of want to go in with this blush from the Pacifica palette. I'm going to go in with my regular e.l.f. pointed <clears throat> powder brush. I really like this blush. I feel like that's a nice, um, like, fresh, springy look. A little bit of a lighter bronzer. Some bright i mean it's not too bright but it's a nice pinky blush i want to put some over here to blend it all out i go back and forth between wanting like the cheek products only in the back and then like everywhere <laughs> and today i'm just feeling like i want it everywhere but yeah the, i love this palette i talk about it a lot um, it's like a one and done for me. I can use those on my eyes. I can use these on my eyes. Use, I love this bronzer. I love this blush. It's got like everything I need in a palette. I'm using the 100% Pure in the shade uh, Dark Cacao. I'm gonna go in today with the Pure Mascara. I put it on or I used it yes or a couple days ago and I actually really liked it. It was a little bit more difficult to take off Actually, I forgot. I like I wanted to go in with Thrive first, but it was a little bit harder to take off than like the Honest Mascara. These are actually great mascaras to mix. Looks amazing. And I love mixing tubing formulas with non-tubing formulas because as if you've watched any of my other videos, I say this all the time, but having any bit of a tubing formula on your lashes even if you have a non-tubing formula on there as well. And it will make everything easier to come off. On the other eye, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna go in with the Thrive first. And then the Pure Mascara, even though... Because that's what I usually do, but today I accidentally did the opposite on the other eye. And I'm curious if that's actually gonna be better. I got this Pure Mascara at... Um, at TJ Maxx for like maybe five dollars or seven or something where i like i looked it up online and it, it was way cheaper than um than like at the store maybe it's like twenty dollars at ulta okay so i definitely like the look better with going in with the pure first and then with thrive you guys there's there's like something so magical about mixing mascaras i've always done well I started doing it probably like a year ago and I have been loving mixing because I feel like, I don't know, I always get better effect with mixing mascaras than using multiple layers of the same one. I'm going to call it there because even though that doesn't 100% look exactly like the other side with, with uh, tubing formulas, if you overdo it, it just starts to get clumpy. And actually, <laughs> what I'm going to do is try to salvage that look with um, a little bit of the Honest. I love the Honest because it's silicone and it just has like such good, precise application. That's better. My face feels very very soft with this foundation doubled i don't know why i also don't see a difference with the primer side so i guess there's our feedback on the primer um okay i'm basically done here i'll just i think put a gloss on this is the bare minerals in the shade sparkle spark plug i also um, I also got this like at TG Maxx. It, it's there. I think this is an old formula because, because I didn't find it online. I 
and that's probably why I was at TJ Maxx. But you guys, TJ Maxx makeup has so many different brands. Like even all the clean formulas I like, like Honest, Well People, Elf, I know is not the cleanest, but Bare Minerals, Pure, so many. So anyway, I hope you like how this look turned out today. I hope um, seeing application of some of the products was helpful for you. And I would love if you have, I would love to chat in the comments if you have any comments or questions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I wanted to do like a five hour check-in. Um, it's been like five and a half or maybe five hours and everything <laughs> looks really, really nice. Um, the only place it's kind of funky is where I put the, where I like layered the concealer and on my chin, it's always not crusty, but like dries up kind of. And that's the only place where like I see anything. Um, a little bit shiny. I didn't powder any of the face though. I'm really impressed with how it's sitting around the nose because a lot of times that area will kind of like break up. And then also, this is some of the least breaking up I've seen. You can see there's like that one line but this is some of the least breaking up I've seen in my smile lines. And I'm just in front of a window right now, just in natural lighting. But I'm seriously, yeah, I'm impressed. And <laughs> I'm going to continue comparing this with other products and just to see, like, is it really worth the $80 or am I just, like, infatuated for one day? Um, so anyways, I got to keep trying this because it's looking really good. And by the way, I've already, like, worked out today, so... <laughs> That's after a sweaty face, which is impressive. I wanted to do one last check-in before I take my makeup off for the night. Um, it's been nine hours, so everything still looks really, really good. I have something weird right there. Um, I am actually kind of surprised at how little it broke down in my smile lines because usually that's one of my worst areas. Um, it looks fine in the forehead. Like, I could see... There's it does gather a tiny bit and um mostly on this side in that line. Um it looks the same on my chin, like my chin is my isn't the kind of the worst area anytime I wear any foundation. Um the mascara flaked a little bit. And I'm not seeing that patchiness on my <laughs> on my under eyes. So Maybe I did use a different powder today. I wonder if it's the 100% pure bamboo blur powder that I was using. That's the next test is the bamboo blur powder with concealer. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it didn't happen today with everything that I have on today between the Well People powder, the Chantecaille foundation, and then both um, Kosas and Cover FX concealer. So anyway, I give this Shantikai foundation definitely a thumbs up. Obviously it's expensive, but it looks super good. And I'm gonna keep testing it with different products because I actually really like it. It's really skin-like. And um, and as it wears down, it doesn't, you can't, like it doesn't look like you have an awful lot of foundation on or something. So anyway, hope you like this. Hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.